Um, so, so that's just a quick snapshot of, of my work and stuff that I found you know, beautiful and, and awe-inspiring. Um, but what I hope to um, convey to you, um, and what I hope that you feel is that, well, first of all, I hope you think that what I do is cool because you know, that would make me happy. <laughs> but you know, my path is so not for everyone, okay? My path is my path, okay? And you all have your path, okay? And, and I know I've heard so many questions from you guys. How do you know if it's your path? How do you know what to do? How do you know if, if it's too much of a commitment to make now, you know? Or how do I make, how do I make the right decision? And, you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, just relax, okay? Your time, okay, there is no time of the present. Your time is limited. But don't waste it living somebody else's life. Don't waste it thinking, am I making the right choice for some, based on what someone else is going to think about me? Make, make the choice for you. Have the courage to follow your own heart and your own intuition. Um, and, and trust that they will give you the answers. You, I, I see such beauty and such... Um, inspiration from from this group in front of me, and and I just um, I just I have faith that you guys have it within you to know what these answers are, and and to to relax some of these these pressures that that I, I'm sensing that you guys are putting on yourself. Um, there there are a lot of wrong decisions out there, but there are also a lot of right decisions out there, and and each one is just an incremental piece on that century that you hopefully will all live. So, so do your best to follow your heart. Do your best to follow your intuition. And know that there's always another choice ahead that can help you redirect your path if, if need be. Okay? All choices are important, but no choice is the only choice. Okay? All right. So, so, so let's, I, I thought maybe we could go into a little bit of detail about what some of my choices were. Um, it's as embarrassing as it is to, to talk about some of this stuff. Um, but my interest, you know, as, as much as I love my scientific work, it is so not the only thing that I love, actually. Um, so that's a picture of me playing the piano, the organ when I was a little kid, with my little bro. And, um, <laughs> and uh, I, I, love, I love music. Um, I designed, so I, I love electronic musical instruments, actually. That was kind of how I got into this in, in the first place. Um, a friend of mine had said, oh, you're, you're an electrical engineer. Can you build a theremin? And I'm like, what's a theremin? Does anyone know what a theremin is? Okay, that's bad. A theremin is actually really cool. Um, has any? And you guys probably don't even listen to radios anymore, so maybe I need better analogies. But um, when I was a kid, okay, um, I used to have the I used to have this clock radio, and uh, it used to uh, wake me up in the morning. And it would, you know, sometimes be kind of frustrating because it would be like, you're like lots of static. And I'd go up to it to like tune it, and I'd tune it. And then I'd step away and it would be fuzzy again. Ah, Cassidy, it's happened to you? And you too, right? <laughs> and you're like, what's going on here? And what's going on there is that your body, the electrical, the electromagnetic waves in your body are interfering with the radio. Okay. <laughs> um, they say turn off all electronic devices when you're on the plane. I'm like, I can't really do that. <laughs> like, but, you know, okay. Um, so your body, your living, breathing, electromagnetic body is interfering with that radio. So this is a musical instrument that actually exploits that property. It's an oscillator circuit, and as you get close to it, it's got an antenna, and that antenna reacts to your body. Okay? Mm -hmm. So one antenna is reacting and, and creates volume, and the other antenna creates pitch. And so if you watch someone play this instrument, they're not touching it. But their hands are moving around it. It's a beautiful instrument, okay? Um, and this is a, the ugly circuit of a theremin that I built, <laughs> which I thought. So personally, how did I get into this? I do not advocate for my path at all. Um, but it, you know, it's had some twists and turns. I went to public school on Roosevelt Island. Went to high school at a place called Dominican Academy. I had all girls in my physics class because it was an all girls school. <laughs> <laughs> So um, that was a little different than what I heard. But I went straight from there to being one of three girls in my entire electrical engineering class. I went from a girls' high school to a guys' college, pretty much. So a bit of a shock. Um, Cooper Union, by the way, cannot resist the opportunity to plug. Full tuition scholarship for anyone who gets in. Parents? Parents, you hear that? Parents. <laughs> <laughs> Education should be as free as water and air, is, the, um, is what the founder said now. 
That was before water and air became two of the most expensive things that we had. But the idea, you understand? It was a really revolutionary one. Um, so I, I told you about the theremin, she told you about the yoga. I, after graduation, I did not go into academia, I went to industry. I went to industry doing telecom, actually, programming some of those voice systems. Um, and then after that, you know, and then I started, you know, it's like, I got the itch again. I was the only person with a bachelor's degree in their entire worldwide labs, okay? And I, and I just saw how everyone else um, had these advanced degrees, and I was talking to everyone, and I, I caught the bug after a while. I started taking classes at the local community college in biology and physiology, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, those nerves are a lot like those, 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 those wires that we plug into the wall, transmitting information. And saw all these connections that were really unexpected for me, and that, that, that ended up, you know, motivating me to want to go and, and take on some graduate work. So I did that, but you know, um, before doing that, ran away to Rome for a year on a Fulbright, um, which was totally amazing. Um, and I worked with um, lung cancer patients um, that year, um, analyzing odor, uh, analyzing the, their breath to try and see if we could detect cancer um, just from just non-invasively. Um, so that was a really interesting project. Um, so I started off at MIT. Um, my, my master's is actually in electrical engineering as well. Each step along the way kind of shifted. So I started electrical engineering, then did bioelectrical engineering, which is in Core 6, by the way. Core 6, Area 7. Um, but then for my PhD, by then it was just, you know, drop the electrical, so biomedical, okay? Um, and, you know, that took a long time. It took five years, right? And, and, you know, not surprisingly, I started getting the bug for something else. I was like, wow, we're applying for all these grants. Um, what is it like on the other side? Um, or, will this therapy ever hit the marketplace? If so, okay. If not, why not? There's a whole wide world out there of, of, of healthcare that I'm really interested in. Um, and so I ended up actually working as a consultant after my graduation. So I left academia. I got a lot of, you know, Black from a lot of scientists for that, actually. Um, but after a couple of years, I actually turned around and, and came back to academia, and I couldn't be more thrilled um, to be a scientist now. But I'm a scientist that's a non-traditional scientist because I'm also working on my my MBA at the same time. We talked about you know there's this tension between producing knowledge and managing the transition of that knowledge through um, and having that be a choice. I'm trying to straddle that right now. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> uh, just starting on that right now. So, so lots of diverse interests. Um, and, you know, I think as a person who practices meditation, it, it's something that I take very seriously to try and get really quiet and, and listen to, um, to my voice, my voice, to try and make those choices as best I can for myself. Um, and it's hard work, um, but it is the work that you must do because it is your life's um, all right, so typical days in the lab, um, it, you know, change cell culture media, you know, do experiments. But the other things that a lot of people don't realize that scientists do is we spend a lot of time writing. A lot of, because our papers are what um, everybody sees. Our papers are the currency. Our papers are how we communicate with other scientists. Our papers are what get, invi get us invited to give talks at, um, at conferences. So I've gotten a chance to give a couple of those. Um, and uh, so, so scientists are also, in a way, um, performers and writers, and this is something that was unexpected for me going into my work, um, and, and probably is unexpected to you for you to hear. Um, but but I I, um, I would urge you to talk to people in their field um, and find out what unexpected things they're doing in their job that really don't correlate with um, what their formal education might have been. Okay, and, and that can help you tease apart um, what choices might be um, awe-inspiring and wonderful for you. And so, at this point, I just really want to, if I had to synthesize everything um, that I would, well, well, into the most important parts that I would want you to take away um, from, from me, are to think about those two quotes, okay? Think about Jane Jacobs and think about um, Steve Jobs and think, first of all, every single thing that you look at, has, just, just treat it with dignity and, and respect. Um, there are certain subjects that you're going to find not interesting, certain subjects that you find more interesting. But there is inherent value in every single thing that you encounter, and, and, and to try and live your life by honoring that. Um, and then secondly, to think about what is the thing that you find most wonderful, most beautiful, and to honor yourself 
by following that path.